Greetings, folks. I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. Welcoming you to episode 107 of the Shred Shack Podcast, your premier source of news and uninformed yet heavily biased opinions pertaining to all things heavy metal. Airing bi-weekly on iTunes, Mixcloud, Google Play for now. I keep saying for now, and I never look into it because fuck you. <laughs> Uh, as well as on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Shred Shack and youtube.com slash Adamant's Templum. Let's get started with some old business. Old business is old business and new business is new business. We have no old business. Let's go on the new business. And this is new business and we do not discuss new business until next quarter. And uh, with new business, we start off with new album releases or what we've listened to as far as new album releases. Um, and I have none because I have been listening to my podcast. All, uh, not my podcast. I don't listen to my podcast. We don't listen uh, to our own stuff. We don't listen to our own Speaking podcast. Speaking of which, is this really episode 107? Because our, our headline here says 106. Yeah, it's 107. Oh, wow. Yeah, you it, really need to change it then. I okay. do. I do. It, it's episode 106 was, last, was two weeks ago. Well then. Yeah. Um, so you, uh, have one. Yes, I listened to the new Elvady record, and it is so fucking good. Um, you kind of know what to expect with Elvady. I mean, they've been, their, their formula is, um, is pretty much the same, but for other, for other bands it works, and like, seriously, if the formula works, why change it? I mean, ask Coke. I mean, the Colonel's been using the same eleven herbs and spices forever, so why, why, why break what's like good? Why are you bringing food into this? I'm I know because I'm fucking hungry. That's what is. <laughs> I just woke up. And I haven't eaten yet. Yeah. All right. So yeah, yeah. the yeah. Colonel owning it. Eleven herbs and spices, motherfucker. Un- unrelated story. Yesterday, two people walked in to work with Taco Cabana, and I was like, "Fuck, I should get some Taco Cabana." God damn it, that's harsh. And, and then, and then I leave. And and Lindsay's out with uh, with friends, and I'm like, bring home food. She's like, oh, it's all gone. And I'm like, I should have gone to Taco Fucking Cabana. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we need that sponsorship too. Yeah, seriously. But no, no it, with Elvedi, um, I think one one of the things I really like about this particular record is it kind of feels like I don't know if they did this intentionally, but kind of just feels like the. Uh, Guitars, bass, and drums, like the the metal part of the band is more at the forefront, uh-huh. and all the folk instruments really take more. I don't want to say a backseat, but it just kind of it's more used as like a filler or like kind of a complement instead of like the driving force. Like, of course, there's certain areas where like it is the focal point of of the song, uh-huh. but the, I think there's more of a balance this time. Gotcha. And there's this, there was just one particular sound on the last record that you just, that is stuck out. It was almost annoying, a little bit of a buzzy sound from one of the folk instruments. And this one is really toned down. You can still hear a little bit, but it's not as prominent as it was on pre on the previous record. Gotcha. But all in all, just a really really good album. Now what's it called? Fuck if I know. It's probably probably something I can't pronounce. That's a ridiculous title. <laughs> it's probably something I can't pronounce, and okay. I don't have it written down, and I don't have the CD in front of me. So. All right. So, what else have we been listening to this past two weeks? All right. Well. Well, I'll I'll start since okay. you have to pull up your Instagram. Um, I've only been listening to my podcast on show. Uh, my, my podcast. My, my really, iPod. Really, really. Lay it in on listening to the whole podcast thing. Well, because you know, I, 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 maybe it's a sign that I should actually listen to our podcast because I don't listen to our podcast. Um, I listen to my iPod on shuffle repeatedly, so um, I had it going for a while for a good like a hundred and some odd songs, and then I had to recharge it, and then it went back to zero, so I had to start over again, and. Some some obviously some some great stuff comes up because it's my iPod. It's <laughs> what I. It's what I. This is the iPod that has, I'd say, ninety nine point nine percent of what I own is on there, um, with like one exception of of like an album that I don't own 
uh, on there just because of the fact that I couldn't find the other iPod, the quote-unquote work iPod. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been nice, you know. Just just I, I my my rides to work are not particularly long. So I get a good, you know, depending on where I'm going. If I'm going to redacted, it's 20 mm-hmm. minutes. If I'm going to other redacted, it's uh, it's about 30 minutes. So I can get, you know, part of Gettysburg in there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is a there was a there's a band out there called um, oh fuck is I think it's Raising the Mammoth. It's it's uh it's another one of those many side projects from from like James Labrie and all that oh, kind of okay. stuff. So like a ten minute song came on and I was like, oh man, this is a long ass song. <laughs> okay, so what have you been listening to? All right, so we go through the albums of the day first. Starting off with uh, has some um, Dillinger Escape Plan. I uh-huh. double dosed up on them with uh, their last two records, Dissociation and One of Us Is the Killer. Both really good, by the uh, way. I like that album title, One of Us Is the Killer. Yeah, it's, it's a really good song, too. Uh, then I went into some In This Moment, their record Blood. Double down on Epica for Woman Crush Wednesday and the lovely Simone Simon. Um... Is it someone Simon or Simon? Simon. Simon, right? Okay. Anyway, but uh, it was Epica's Design Your Universe and The con- uh, the Divine Conspiracy. We'll beat Seal the Deal and Let's Boogie. Still one of the greatest album titles ever. Then I could listen to some Avatarium, The Girl in the Raven Mask. Great Remembering album. how great that record was. Great album. And um, Our Lady Peace, Navid. You know, that album's come up a lot on my, on my, uh, my random, my shuffle. I love that album. Like that, that and Spiritual Machines have come up a lot on yeah. the shuffle. Uh, went to some Trivium, uh, Ascendancy, what really got me into them in the first place, and uh, another L V D record, Everything Remains As It Never Was. I think that's the only one I know. Listen to some Apocalyptica, Worlds Collide, probably one of their uh, one of their better records. I think it's one of the, one of the only ones I have. It's, I love that record. It's so good. Listen to Disharmonia Mundi, which was a, another side project of Speed from Soilwork. And closing out the week, I listened to A Change of Seasons by Dream Theater. Of course you did. Of course I did. But that's not the only Proctastic song I list, uh, album I listened to, to uh, this week. Um, while I was hanging out Saturday night or Friday night or whatever and couldn't sleep, I was listening to Porcupine Tree, their Voyage 34 uh, record. And I I call it a record mistakenly because I read up on it, and originally it was supposed to be a single, a 20-minute long single. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we can add to this. <laughs> yeah, a 20-minute long single, all instrumental, by the way, about an acid trip. But then it kind of changed things up a little bit, and they they did two parts to it, then they did four parts to it and turn out to be like 70 minutes long and it's awesome and it's actually really good just like quote unquote easy listening music because again it's not as like heavy as some of his other stuff but it's actually really 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 good it's, it's just funny how do you explain that you know it's like yeah we started off with a 20 minute track and then suddenly it's 70 minutes long so uh yeah yeah and there's phases to it and, and it's just it's ridiculous, but it's amazing. I think it's I think I, I, concerning Porcupine Tree. That's one of the few albums I have from them. <laughs> <laughs> um, also in the mix here was the la- the newest record from Periphery Hail Stan, which is really so fantastic. Uh, and I'm I'm moving apart. I'm moving to a, my new apartment, and I was killing time. And I've been listening to a lot of uh, Kown. I still don't think I'm pronouncing that properly. But I downloaded from Bandcamp their entire discography, and I listened to the entire discography while while setting up my apartment. And while I was there, just to kind of keep on with the proctastic mode, I listened to the the newest records from Devin Townsend, Tesseract, and Astronoid. So, so it's just a proggy week. Yeah, really. Just I needed something in the background that can can keep me going for a long, so, yeah. long. 
long time. It's like, it's like I have a long project ahead of me. I need something that's gonna keep me going. I mean, especially considering that like Devin Townsend's record Empath, the last couple tracks all compri are all one song that's twenty three minutes long. Yeah. The opening track opening track to the new periphery album is seventeen minutes long. You know, these these are the kind of things that that get me going. Gotcha. You know, and of course change of seasons. It's twenty minutes long. You know? Yeah. I made the joke that I I put that album on for a thirty minute workout just so I can make the post about getting through one and a half songs for a thirty minute workout. So and you can just play Gettysburg and you can get through one song. Pretty much, yeah, actually I used to. I, I used to use that as my, my cardio timer. There's um there's a song by Green Carnation called um, uh, I think it's Light of Day, Day of Darkness. It's one track, sixty minutes long. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. That sounds amazing. Yeah, it's it, it well, it's it's doom metal, so it's not proggy. So. Well, I uh, I also listened to an early stream of the uh, the new Sun record. <laughs> yeah. So you listen to four notes. <laughs> yes, over the span of sixty minutes. Yeah, it's it's. Wow. <laughs> it takes a special kind of person to really enjoy that band. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it was fun and it was enjoyable, but I I need a little bit more like uh energy, I guess. Yeah, like, I don't you know. you're just sitting there like and, and. <laughs> especially when one of their songs is like 20 minutes long, it's like, "Wow, this is wow." <laughs> Just, just, just definitely don't hold your breath while listening to that. No, 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 no. But again, that was—it was actually—it was—it was good. It was good. You know, if you go into it ex expecting that, you know, to take a lot of time to to move around, it, it's 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 alright. What about you? What have you been listening to besides your iPod on shuffle? That's it. That's, That's it. Literally it. That is literally all I've been listening to, um, just because I've been, um, I, f I finally finished working on the January top three, and uh, I think I have my, my Black Sabbath written, so we can finish the 10 word reviews. Sweet. So it's basically just been my work, so when I'm, when I'm working on videos, I can't listen to music, um... And when I'm home, lately I've been I've been home more often. So when I've been home, I've actually been hanging out with Lindsay. So God forbid uh, you hang out with your wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I, I've been watching wrestling and stuff like that. So it's it's less less music and more other things. Um, but in the driving, uh, it's been just listening to the iPod and shuffle. Well, that was the thing about moving. I'm, I'm... For this, especially this particular weekend, I made three back and forth trips between the house I was renting and their apartment, and it's a long ride, so I, I got to listen to a lot of good stuff this week, yeah. this weekend anyway, and then I was hoping that uh, the new Grand Magus album was released this past Friday, but of course, you know, you're not guaranteed it anymore at, at Amazon, it's supposed to come tomorrow, uh, we're recording this on Monday, so... Hopefully I get that so I can talk about that. And then while I was at it and couldn't sleep on Saturday, I pre-ordered a bunch of stuff that's going to be coming out the next like month or two. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically, Death Angels Humanicide, the the, the new Ramstein record. Yeah, I, I got to pre-order the, the new Ramstein record for reasons that for reasons we, for for reasons that we will not get into. Uh, Dreadnought is releasing a new record, so I was like, hell yeah, I'm picking that up. Of course. I'm on a Marth, Berserker, definitely got to pick that up, so that's pre-ordered. Pelican's releasing a new record, and Baroness is uh, releasing their new record in June, so... It feels like forever since they released an album. Because it was at the very tail end of 2015. Yeah. Like, it was December 2015, so it was like right as we started this podcast. Yeah. I actually have it, too, and I'm surprised, just because, you know, I'm, I, I haven't listened to it very much. Oh, it's so. super good. So, so I'm I'm excited for that one in particular. Yeah. Like the ones I'm really excited for are pretty much like the Dreadnought record, Amata Marth, and Baroness. You know everything else I'm, I'm pumped for, but those are like the three that like yeah, that's going to be a really good time right there. Well, 
All right, so let's go into news, and we start off, unfortunately, with an obituary. Yes. UFO guitar keyboard player Paul Raymond has passed away after suffering a heart attack. He was 73 years old. Now, UFO's on their final tour right now. Yes. Um, and they said that they weren't sure how they would proceed with um, with this passing as far as what they're going to do. Um, I'm sure... Now, I read about this a week or two ago. Yeah. Now, I'm sure they figured out something by now. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, it's a damn dirty yeah. shame. Yeah. You know, I think one of the, UFO is probably one of the most uh, understated, influential bands out there. Yeah. You know, I, I know they had a huge influence on um, Maiden. Iron Maiden. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you know that Iron Maiden is about to come on when Dr. Doctor starts playing. Oh, yeah. I mean that's the that's just the the precursor to awesomeness. So I mean that's just so good, and I I uh, I don't have much of their stuff, and I haven't listened to much of their stuff. But I do have Strangers in the Night. Uh, is it Strangers in the Night? I don't know. I think it's Strangers in the Night. Their their live record, their their most popular, most famous record, and it's so good. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So let's move on to some general news. All right. So, a university professor has shot down a suspect's murders, suspected murderer's claim that he was driven by heavy metal music to commit his crime. 31-year-old Cody Lutz told a Mansfield, Ohio police detective that, quote, Nordic heavy metal music, unquote, caused him to stab 90-year-old Omar Brown to death with a piece of a broken wooden dowel rod. Detective Dave Schurer, Schurer sure. testified last month that Lutz told him the music, quote, spoke to him and told him to kill before midnight on March 18th or that, quote, Armageddon will begin and would last for a thousand years. Daniel Shanahan, who is an assistant professor of music theory and cognition at The Ohio State University, told 10TV.com uh, that there is no basis for Lutz's claim. He is quoted as saying, music is no more of a motivator than anything else to do evil, he said. Shanahan said, dark poetry and morbid lyrics have been around for centuries and said those who play music have for their, uh, those who play music for their crimes use it to conceal their own mental health issues. I would agree with that. I would totally agree with that. Because this, this has been going on for such a long fucking time. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. and 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 he has a point. Like morbid lyrics and and dark poetry have existed for such a long time. I mean, I I I've, I've read Edgar Allan Poe, but I'm not sitting there putting uh, locking somebody into a wall. Right. No pit in the pendulum over here. Yeah. No pit in the pendulum. No cask of amontillado. Not Montiel. taking somebody's heart and putting it on the floorboards. Mm-hmm. N- yeah. None of that is happening here. Yeah. So yeah, no. That that's that's. Especially when when it sits there and, when it sits there and says it spoke to him, it's like, yep, you're done. Or <laughs> I, Armageddon would happen; it would last for a thousand years. That just sounds delusional, and it sounds like you know something that you would put be you put it in a hospital for or yeah. start a cult. Yeah, I was I, I was recently thinking of um, Dogma with um, uh, with the Metatron. Anytime someone says they're talking to God, they're talking to me. Or they're talking to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alan Rickman. Yeah. Too good. Too fucking good. All right. Hell Yeah is reported to have recruited Stone Sour's Roy Mayorga as his new drummer. Word of Mayorga's involvement with Hell Yeah gained strength after, Mayor, after Roy, uh, Roy posted two Instagram photos of his new drum setup, which was deemed to some, uh, which was deemed by some to be quote very Vinnie Paul like, which is of course a reference to late Hell Yeah drummer Vinnie Paul Abbott. Yeah. I had a feeling that they would continue. I don't think they were going to just stop being a band despite his death. It's not like um, you know you can't say that he's not a huge part of the band, but he wasn't the front man. Yeah, you know, you, you know, look at Spinal Tap. They had a hundred drummers. Well, that's that's different. Yeah, I know. But I, I, I would have expected maybe like the band members to go back to their respective bands. That's what I would have preferred. I would have preferred uh, 
Mudvayne to become a thing again. Mudvayne to come back and Nothing Face to come back. Yeah. I would have preferred either one of those or both. But I guess they, they feel that Hell Yeah is their, is their baby at the moment. So, I mean, it's good. I'm glad. You yeah. know, good for them. I mean, this may just be just for short term, too. I don't know. I mean, they they had their new album out uh, coming out soon. This is the last record that features anything by Vinnie Paul, so they're probably gonna have to tour behind that. Yeah. Uh, at least for one, at least for one cycle. So if they continue after that, it's gonna be a completely different story. But Roy Mayorga is not doing anything at the moment, only because Corey's getting ready to do Slipknot. Slipknot. So Stone Sour is gonna be put on the back burner for a little bit. Yeah. But Roy May- Mayorga is also an, uh, another gun for hire type. Yes. Yeah. He's yes. He's, he's appeared in a lot of things. Yes. So. So he, I think he, he probably would benefit from being in a, in a solid band for a little bit. Yeah. While Stone Sour is taking the back seat. Mm-hmm. All right, continuing on, Cadaver, one of the first Norwegian death metal bands to release an LP, is back. Exploding back into action for the first time since 2004, founding member and Cadaver mastermind Anders Odin, who is also in Satyricon and Order, uh, has returned to reclaim his throne as one of Europe's most uh, true death metal pioneers. You so copy oh, and paste. Oh, copy and paste. I left it just the way it was. I copied and pasted this shit so bad. This so is, hard. Man. To open up the new chapter of Cadaver, a brand new track, Circle of Morbidity, is now available in video form via YouTube. This first track also features guest vocals from Jeff Becerra of Possessed. So much copy and paste. Oh, right dude, Blabbermouth is really up in their game with ridiculousness in their articles. So yeah. it was it. Sometimes I just have to, just because it would just be take so much time to edit it down. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I can shorten that. Cadaver's back. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> but come on, some of this stuff is so ridiculous. You just kind of have to say it. Reclaiming his throne as Europe's true death metal pioneer. I love it. I'm imagining it's just like a, like a carnival attraction and like a dude in like a really sparkly jacket and a top hat just, you know, like like one of the one of the first Norwegian death metal bands to release an LP is back. <laughs> <laughs> you there, sir. You look like you can use some death metal in your life. It's just actually, you know what? I'm 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 thinking more along the lines of like the snake oil salesman from back in the day. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Okay. Fucking hell. Ricky Warwick, of course, of Black Star Riders and Thin Lizzy and the Almighty, all three of those bands. He has signed a worldwide deal with Nuclear Blast for his solo album releases. Further, he's also announced that he has begun recording his latest solo offering. When Life Was Fast and Hard. Playing on the album were Warwick on vocals and guitars, Robert Crane on bass, Keith Nelson on guitar, and Xavier Murel, Muriel on drums, as well as several guest, uh, special guests. Yeah, next album is going to be called When Old Life is Old and Painful. <laughs> <laughs> That's my autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired during the day. An autobiography. <laughs> It's bad when you're hanging out with somebody like before you go to work and like and they're just like, yo, you need a nap. <laughs> Listen, use a grumpy bitch. <laughs> you need a nap. Well, according to according to TV, when when those moments happen, you need a Snickers. But although I could definitely go for one of those too. Yeah. You know, the, those do sound pretty pretty awesome. All right, destruction have signed a new deal with Nuclear Blast Records. Nuclear Blast being very busy as of late. Yeah. According to Global News, Montreal, Quebec, Canada has officially been recognized for its heavy metal scene. Councillor Craig Save published the mo- this his motion hailed last week to have Montreal held as a city of excellence in heavy metal music. The motion was voted on earlier uh, motion was voted on on Monday, April 15th, during a city council meeting and received bipartisan support. Several well-known metal bands got their start in Montreal, including Cata- uh, Cryptopsy and Cataclysm, and the city hosts an annual two-day summer metal festival dubbed Heavy Metal Montreal. 
The Quebec province's most famous heavy metal outfit, Voivod, is from Young Queer. So, so all the all the folks around uh, San Antonio, who who say this is the heavy metal capital of the world, you guys you gotta step it up. They voted. <laughs> <laughs> they voted to have their city <laughs> recognized for its excellence. In heavy metal music, and, and it was bipartisan. So that means that means that that two warring factions came together and went, "Yeah, we fucking rock." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we rock hard, <laughs> so hard, so hard. All right, next one up is kind of a bummer here. According to the Blast, the IRS, those evil sons of bitches has filed a federal tax lien against late Stone Temple pilot singers um, Scott Weiland's estate, alleging he did not pay his federal income tax from 2012 to 2014. The lien lists his ex-wife Mary Weiland as his representative. Federal tax authorities filed a lien one week before the tax deadline, claiming Weiland owes $818,569.62. The troubled frontman's estate has been played with debt over... Uh, ever since he died of an accidental overdose in December of 2015. That seems like so long ago. Yeah. Since his death, his family has been tasked with getting his memorabilia and possessions appraised to help cover what's owed. Last year, Wyland's estate was hit with a lien by the California State uh, Tax F- Franchise Franchise Board for almost $250,000. The state has also ordered by a judge to pay $4,000 a month to the late Stone Temple Pilot singer's children. How many kids does he have? I think the ones that they mentioned are two okay. with his ex-wife. Okay. I think. But still. But still, that's a lot of money. That's that's. I mean, I I remember fighting to get mine cut down a lot. Four thousand dollars is like holy shit. Like I understand your your child support is based on a percentage of your income, but damn. <laughs> <laughs> Like Mr. Wyland, you owe eight hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Okay, but how much am I getting? <laughs> yeah, no, you don't seem to understand. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here's a cool one. Dream Theater uh, keyboardist Jordan Rudis has announced details for the fourth annual Jordan Rudis Key Fest, which will be held May thirtieth and May thirty first and June first at Sweetwater Sound in Fort Wayne, Indiana. KeyFest is a three-day interactive keyboard gathering with Rudis and guest artist David R- uh, Rosenthal and Omot- Atoma At- Atora Ad- 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 Amaro. Amaro Ruiz Ruiz. During the day, these three renowned keyboards will lead workshops on essential skills ranging from the art of soloing, keyboard technique, sound design, music apps, improvisation, and more. In the evenings, they will perform intimate concerts and lead the participants in jams and master classes. In addition to interactive experiences with guest artists, KeyFest also offers intensive clinics with keyboard and software manufacturers. This this will tell you how 20-minute songs go into 70-minute yeah. albums. It just seems like a very cool experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, I think I read something recently that um, he also isn't ruling out... Um, uh, a reunion of liquid tension yes 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 speaking of you know 20 minutes into 30 into 70 yeah, <laughs> yeah. but that would be really cool because that's mike portnoy yeah john petrucci and jordan rudis so that would be amazing yeah which is also nice to see because like you know at, when mike portnoy left left dream theater it was always like there's so much tension in the band but they've like i think they've gone out of their way to kind of prove that wrong mm-hmm. like during christmas like the, the Petrucci and Portnoy family going to the Rockefeller Center together to take pictures. And I was like, oh my God. So. You, you fucking nerd. <laughs> what? I follow them on Instagram. I'm sorry. You sound, you sound like, you sound like Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> Showing me pictures of, of Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. They're so in love. They're, They're so in love. In love. <laughs> Shoving it in my face. is like, I can't see it if it's in my face. Well, you don't argue with her because she's the man. Anyway, all 90,000 tickets to the Iron Maiden headlined Metal Night of this year's Rock and Rio Festival sold out within two hours after they went on sale on Thursday, April 11th. 
90,000. 90,000. I remember the Rock and Rio DVD was like 250,000. Yeah. I guess a lot of people broke in. <laughs> a lot uh, of it probably depends on the on the venue. Yeah, it's true. Probably depends on the venue. Yeah. Here's an interesting one. Nightwish vocalist Flor Jansen will appear on the next season of the Dutch reality TV show Beast Zangas, which is called Best Singers. In each season, a number of well-known performers alternate as the central artist who picks songs out of his or her own repertoire to be sung by the other participants of the show. The original performer judges the covers of his songs done by the participants. I wonder what what would she would pick. I would probably say something from like After Forever or Revamp. I don't I don't know if I don't know if she'd be able to do anything by Nightwish. Well, you have Nightwish. You have her new rock project because she's ha- she has a new project. Um, she's been on Arian albums, so. right? But she probably has to pick like stuff from her like, own her catalog. own stuff. I mean, yeah. In other words, for any, I don't know if they, if they have the same kind of copyright laws in uh, in where is Dutch the Netherlands? Netherlands. Uh, that <laughs> where is Dutch in autobiography? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if they have the same kind of copyright laws, but I know that like you have to have permission to play uh, songs on TV. Yeah, you know that's why I think when they do like American Idol, there's like a very certain amount of songs that you can probably get away with singing. Yeah, you know. So I like I don't know if they have that same kind of copyright laws. <laughs> In Dutch. <laughs> nah, I was just imagining, like, I know that, that Kiss was on American Idol at one point. Yeah, and, Rob uh, Halford, I think, was on it at one point. But, but like, I can just imagine Gene Simmons going, I didn't say you could play that song. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Camelot has announced the addition of drummer Alex Landenberg to the group's ranks. He joins the band as a replacement for Johan Nunez who has been absent from Camelot's touring activities for most part of the year after suffering a leg injury that prevented him from performing live. Landenberg previously sat behind the kit for Camelot in July of 2017 when the band supported Iron Maiden in San Bernardino, California. Right on. Rob Zombie has officially completed work on Three from Hell, the sequel to his earlier films House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. A fall release is expected. Uh, I thought the I thought they were killed at the end of it seems to be very ambiguous. Yeah, it, it, like the, the movie ends with them like like gunning it at the cops, right? Yeah. Okay. You, you, and you see them getting shot, but again, if you don't die on screen, you're not really dead, unless you're in the Marvel universe where even if you do die on screen, you're not really dead. Just 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 don't make it a dream. Just don't make it a dream. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, that would really suck. All right, Ecstatic X and Dope guitarist Trip Eisen has launched a new industrial rock band called Face Without Fear. The group, which also features Ken Mantis Hoyt from Crush Pile on vocals, Terrestrial T from Methodical on drums, and Dante on guitar, will make its live debut on Saturday, June 1st at QXT's in Newark, New Jersey. Right on. Now, the interesting part about this is that this is about, he's been very quiet because he was convicted of uh sexual assault of a minor too. yeah i was i was gonna say i was like is this the guy that yeah this is that guy okay this is that guy um so yeah so uh, yeah no. i think I, I i think he's kind of jumping on the 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 bandwagon of the i'm really really sorry for what i did but here's my new band kind of bandwagon like tim lambesis you know so I, I'm not I'm not particularly fond of this one. At yeah, all. but you you also you, you you did the thing that that even like the, like the worst people in jail are like. I yeah, know, right? <laughs> it's like, dude. <laughs> like you are you are universally hated for for anything involving like like life <laughs> child molestation or child pornography or anything like that you were just universally like blacklisted by everyone even like the worst people even satan's like, <laughs> like right dude here. <laughs> fuck you know, like like dude i didn't do that that was me 
Yeah, so I mean, I, I'm not I'm not particularly fond of this news here at all. Yeah. Like it, when you when when you get actually convicted and spend like time in jail for that sort of thing, you lay low for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, it, again, I think like in the comments section there were jokes, of course, made like you know you can't perform within 500 feet of a school, you know, and all that shit. But, yeah. You know, Jesus Christ, lay low forever. Because that's the sort of thing that follows you forever. Yeah. Might as well just tattoo it to your fucking forehead. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. According to Al-Bawaba? Al-Bawaba. Al-Bawaba. Lebanese authorities have banned Simple Torah from performing in the country, accusing the Brazilian-American band of insulting Christianity and being devil worshippers. This is 2019, people. Anyway. Concert promoters Skull Session announced on Friday, April 19th, that authorities refused to process the band members' visas, forcing them to cancel a planned gig in Beirut's Hamar- Hamra district on April 28th. Skull Session told the New Arab that they had not been allowed to see the group's ban order, but have been given information by officers who have seen the document. These quotas saying, basically what we learn is that they are considered devil worshippers, that they have disrespected Christianity, and that they have performed in Israel, Skull Session said, which is, of course, all not true. <clears throat> so apparently, I was reading a little bit further on in the article that if you have a Israeli stamp in your passport, Lebanon will not let you into the country. At all? At all. Wow. Now, while the band has never performed formed essentially in Israel. They did record a video way back when in Israel. Mm. So that you know, that strike that strike one. Yeah. Um again, the whole devil worshippers and Christian and insulting the Christianity thing, again it's it's two thousand nineteen people. Get over it. Yeah. Get over your religion. For real mildly annoying when you still read about these sort of things. Speaking of these sort of things, we have a crime blotter. Apparently. Yeah. Uh, when did that happen? Um, a couple, couple, maybe a week or two. Well, why wasn't the Trip Eisen thing under this? <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> Fuck. That still bothers me. Anyway, according to ABC News, a 21-year-old man who had ties to the black metal scene has been arrested in connection to three fires at black churches in Louisiana. Holden Matthews, and I'm just going to say that I hate the name Holden, only because I hate, 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 Catcher hate, in the Rye? Catch, Catcher in the Rye. Yeah. Fucking hate that book. I read it once. I read it once in high school, and I thought I disliked it because I was forced to read it in high school. I went back and read it again as an adult on my own. Mm-hmm. Fucking hated it. Okay. Hate that book. Anyway, it's suspected of setting the fires over a span of 10 days. He's being held at St. Landry Parish... Uh, Jail on three counts of simple arson of a religious building. Louisiana State Fire Marshal H. Butch Browning, now I love the name Butch, uh, told ABC News that, quote, we're still vetting several motives, but added they have found that Matthews has ties to black metal and its association and history with church burnings in other parts of the world. Matthews was arrested after investigators found a gas can at the scene of one of the fires and traced it back to a local Walmart and linked it to Matthews' credit card. You idiot. There was a follow-up a couple days later, but according to ABC News, a judge has denied bail for the 21-year-old black metal fan who is suspected of having set fires at three churches in Louisiana. That guy, Holden, appeared in court on Monday, whatever date. I don't remember copying. It was probably probably last Monday. It was probably last Monday. He entered a plea of not guilty via his court-appointed lawyer. Matthews did not speak at the hearing where District Attorney Earl Taylor filed a motion to deny bail because it was determined that Holden was an imminent danger to society and is a flight risk. Fuck that guy. For real. And again, I, I, you have to reiterate, it's 2019. I, I thought we were over church burnings. Well, apparently this guy, if you, when you follow him, if you went to his like social media page, he was a big fan, a big fan of Varg. Oh, then yeah, then yeah, you're a gi- you're had, a gigantic douche. And he had, um, I think he followed or liked a bunch of things on extreme alt right um, blogs or 
it's or social media and neo Nazi stuff. Like, yeah, this this guy's a douche. Yeah. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you, buddy. Fuck you and your name. <laughs> Fucking Holden. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Holden in all about her Fucking Holden. Uh, anyway, unfortunately, we don't have any news of Metallica breaking shit. Not this time. So, I'm sure. But we go on to my favorite section. F f f feudin. Uh. Feudin. I'm going to pronounce it like that now, so it sounds foreign. I want you to pronounce the thing that's 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 in capital letters. Yeah, later that on. is not fucking happening. <laughs> there, there is no fucking way. Icelandic is so rough. Uh. Fuck that. Anyway, according to Ruv, the Icelandic National Broadcasting Service, Slayer is suing the organizers of Iceland's Secret Solstice Music Festival, claiming it hasn't been fully paid for appearing at last year's event. The legendary thrash metal band, which is in the middle of its farewell tour, says it's still owed around $134,000 which is 16 million Icelandic krona. All right, the local media has reported that a significant number of people and companies have not been paid for their work at Solstice, Pro at Solstice Productions, which has handled Seeker Solstice's operations. Earlier this year, Feminist Rap Collective, really long title with a lot of things I cannot even be close to pronounce, said that it also hadn't been paid for its performance at the 2018 Seeker Solstice According to Iceland Review, um, Vikingjor Heyor Anarsorn, bleh, uh, wow. All right, he is the new manager of the festival, and he later said that while the festival has struggled financially, it has plans to pay the remaining artists they owe money in due time. Well, good. Uh, here's a collection of three words that I never thought I'd ever hear, and that's feminist rap collective. <laughs> Not saying there's anything wrong with it, but man, I never expected to hear that. Right. That in succession. That's that's something. Well, they're definitely Icelandic with that name. My God. Yeah. I mean, throw Bjork in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's so, amazing. So we got nothing for alcoholica. Yeah. But we have merchandising. 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 Fan tunes. <laughs> has announced the official Rush graphic novel chronicling the making of the band's classic album A Farewell to Kings, the first in the animation studio's ongoing relationship with Rush. This epic, fully authorized graphic novel chronicles the birth of Rush's classic album A Farewell to Kings. You can relive the production trials and triumphs alongside Alex Lifeson, Getty Lee, and Neil Peart as they create the masterpiece of progressive rock that gave birth to such tracks as Closer to the Heart and The Majestic Xanadu. The book is co-written by Fantoons' David Cal uh, Calcano and Lindsay Lee and features artwork by Juan Herrera and Italia Manero. The story was written with input from Rush guitarist Alex Lifeson and album producer Terry Brown, who also penned the foreword. Previous releases th through the partnership between the band and the publisher have included 2015's Rush Tunes by Fantoons Volume 2112, and 2017's Where's Getty and Alex and Neil, Volume 1. In July of 2019, Fantoons will release a unique, fully authorized coloring book with 70 evocative illustrations packed with gorgeous Rush artwork and references from moving pictures to Clockwork Angels. I've never heard of this Fantoons thing, but like they seem to be really, really liking Rush. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot of Rush love yeah, right there. Yeah. Like, it sounds like they went out of their way to create this... this uh, this publishing company just to work with Rush. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm really interested in seeing if they, if they give as much effort to other bands. <laughs> or if they actually do anything for other bands. Right. But that is it for general and merchandising and all that sort of news. Are you ready? I'm ready for, I'm ready for, for recording, recording news. news. All right, so we got Death Grind Band, Serpent of Genosis. Will release his debut album as I drink from the infinite well of inebriation. Jesus, tap dancing Christ, what a title. Right? On June 14th via 1126 Records. The project began with musicians Max Lavelle, Alex Gla Al Glassman, and Darren Set 
Seska playing in the band uh, Goratori. 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 Inevitably, they took. Uh, they each took different paths over the years. However, old friends have reunited and sparked a musical connection with Serpent of Genosis. Gnosis. Uh-huh. It's just Gnosis. It's just Gnosis? It's just oh, Gnosis. Okay. I'm sorry. Glassman and uh, Seska were writing the music in 2018 and ultimately turned to their former and current bandmates who are in the Black Dahlia Murder and Job for a Cowboy to help fill the gaps. After a unique recording process where the members individually tracked their parts from home, the album was mixed by drummer Darren Seska in his home, uh, in his own House of Grind studio. That does sound pretty cool, House of Grind. Right? So that should be fun. Glenn Danzig's long-awaited collection of Elvis Presley covers, appropriately titled Danzig Sings Elvis, is scheduled for a fall release. Danzig, the guy who does our intro. Yeah, that guy, who's totally not Danzig. <laughs> <laughs> that, guy, that guy who does our intro. <laughs> Hello. <Hurl. laughs> One of these days, I want to meet Danzig and actually have him redo that exact thing. Like, right? even say, totally not Danzig. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I know. It would be yeah. so fucking amazing. All right, Hollywood Vampires return with new music in the form of their second album, Rise. Joe Perry, Johnny Depp, and Alice Cooper join forces once again for the, quote, unmissable rock album of 2019. Rise will be released on June 21st via Ear Music. I actually want to hear that because I, I remember hearing some of the first album and really enjoying it. I, re- I listened to the one of the tracks that they released for the new album, and it's actually... It's not bad at all. Yeah, they're, they're they're a good band. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much what you would expect from Alice Cooper and Joe Perry, and I think Johnny Depp does a little bit of the vocals on it, too, and it's really not bad. Although, he sounds like he'd be more suited for, like, an 80s goth band. <laughs> like, the, his vocal style is more that, 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 that sound. <laughs> he just comes up in the Edward Scissor Hands outfit. <laughs> oh, my gosh, or anything from his Tim Burton days. Yeah, uh, well, those are still going on. Yeah, well... His classic Tim Burton days. Yeah, there you go. That, that'll do. All right. King's X has entered a Black Sound Studio in Pasadena, California to begin recording its new album, the band's first in over a decade, due later this year via Australia's independent record label, Golden Robot Records. Great name. We're having a lot of great names come around through today. Yeah. Helming the disc is renowned producer Michael Parnin, recognized for his work with a varied range of artists from Rage Against the Machine and Missy Elliott to Andrew Lloyd Webber and Barbara Streisand. Goddamn. So he's got some sonic abilities there. Yeah. Probably one of the most anticipated records for me personally is Killswitch Engage will release their new studio album in the fall. The follow-up to 2016's Incarnate will be made available via Metal Blade Records in the U.S. and Sony Music Entertainment in the rest of the world. The effort will feature a guest appearance on one song by the band's former lead singer, Howard Jones. Right on. It is going to be awesome. Yeah. I, I was going to say, I, I recall doing the top three where, where you put them as uh, as your number one, and then we got we got, we got hard-fucked by uh, YouTube for that one. Yeah, and then I remember you edited it and accidentally sped up the tracks, and so it turned into... <laughs> <laughs> Alvin and the Engage or Kill Switch of the Chipmunks. <laughs> Ch- Chipmunks Engage. It was it was it was hilarious. And I actually thought you did that on purpose. No, I did not. I didn't. Yeah. I, to- I totally did not. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that was an oversight. That was that was me just being like Fuck it! I want to get the goddamn thing done, and yeah, I because it was taken down like almost immediately. Yeah, it, it, well, because because um, the algorithm usually catches things quickly. Yeah. Um, usually, I say usually. That's because um, it took forever for the ones that Pat just got knocked out for um, to be caught, and those yeah. are those are older ones. <sighs> All right, so we got the good that men do. Mm-hmm. For this year's Record Store Day, Atlanta Progressive Metalers Mastodon released a cover of Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven in honor of their late manager, Nick John. John, who also managed Gojira, passed away last September from pancreatic cancer. 
All proceeds from the single single will be donated to pancreatic cancer research. Right on. I did listen to the cover, and it is really good. Cool. It is really good. I, I'm not particularly sure who sings it, whether it's Troy or Brett, but he does a really good job. I, I was super impressed. Because okay. it stays very true to the original, and it, it's just really, really good. Mm-hmm. All right, Sully Erna of Godsmack has announced the creation of the Scars Foundation to support ongoing mental health struggles facing so many. There you go. With the rise of suicides, bullying, addiction, abuse, and so many other challenges, the Scar Foundation is dedicated to providing resources and tools to educate and empower people on a global level that struggle with these burdens. Only weird thing is that this is written. Th- this is. This is made by a man who wrote a song called Cry Like a Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Yeah, but I don't I don't think that was aimed at, uh, you know, people suffering from mental illness. It was aimed at Nikki Six. Fuck that guy. Oh. People, so people suffering so, from mental illness. <laughs> you know, he was he, suffering from drug-related illness. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. He, yeah, but at the time that he wrote it, he was being a douche. Crying like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Whatever. But no, no, it's uh, super but, cool. But obviously super cool, yes. All right. One last bit here. Last year's first ever All Within My Hands Day of Service enlisted more than 1,000 volunteers to spend a day working at local food banks across the U.S. And now the All Within My Hands Foundation announces its second annual day of service on Wednesday, Mar- uh, May uh, 22nd. Once again, Metallica fans across the U.S. are invited to volunteer for a day at food banks in communities that have supported Metallica on its North American dates over the course of the Worldwide Tour. In cooperation with Feeding America, Metallica and All Within My Hands uh, have been proud to make contributions to their local partners in those cities. Now, once again, they humbly ask their friends across the country to, uh, to support the fight against hunger in their neighborhoods. More than 50 food banks will be participating in this year's activities, which is more than twice as many as last year. And each registered volunteer will receive a special All Within My Hands t-shirt commemorating our United Day of Service. Please note that space is limited and therefore registering in advance is mandatory. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to accept walk-ins. Yeah, no shit. Because, I mean, I'm sure just to... Just to be a part of that, a lot of folks would be yeah. all over it. But that's super cool. It's always cool. Always cool. Metallica, Metallica, for all the shit that they're giving, they do a lot of stuff mm-hmm. for their community and, and you know the greater good in general. The yeah. greater good. Yeah. Like in Hot Fuzz. All right. So I don't think we have anything for crowdfunding tracker. So let's go on to... Um, Concert news? Yeah. I really had to remove that thing from crowdfunding tracker. That's cool. Yeah. All right, so let's start off with some festivals. Yay, festivals. I'm not going to – there was a, a little bit of a blurb here about it, but I'm just going to go right into it. Louder Than Life 2019. Here is the festival building. Wait, where is it? Don't know. Don't care. Okay. It's America, I think. America. America. All right, Friday, September 27th, you have Slipknot, Stained, A Day to Remember, Chevelle, I Prevail, Architects, Bear Tooth, Motionless in White, Philip H. and Selmo and the Illegals. Guar. The Crystal Method. Graveyard. Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. New Year's Day. All Them Witches. Crown, Land, Crown Lands. Joyous Wolf, Dead Posey, and Santa Cruz. So two things. One, um, since we mentioned Guar, I have actually... Um, I actually have to do research on Guar. Because I'm putting them into one of my uh, one of my articles, um, and it's more so a research into their origin because they're supposed to be aliens, right? And that's what my article's about is aliens. It's oh. not about aliens, but it's about aliens. Um, so, uh, but I didn't realize that there was so much like actual like effort put into their story. Oh, like, like they're like they're like. Like okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah. They're like there's actual there's actual thought to it. And, you know, there's, 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 it's not just you know we're we're big scary monsters. It's like no, we're we're aliens and we're here to destroy your your shit ass planet. Um, and to all them witches, what a great title, right? <laughs> we we just been knocking them out today with those. All them witches and all, all about them it. witches. All the bi- and autobiography. 
All right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's All the witches <laughs> burning through the ditches in the Dragula. <laughs> the Rob Zombie story. <laughs> you know, growing up, some of you had never dug through the ditches and burned through the witches, and it shows. <laughs> I, I think one of my favorite internet memes based around that is that Rob Zombie is the original feminist because he wrote a song with every word that rhymes with bitches but doesn't say bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say original, but... but well, I mean, he's... Yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, like, yes, that is pretty amazing that he, that he, <laughs> that he was... <laughs> he just sat there and like took like with, with a whiteboard and just put itches and then just put all the letters up there <laughs> <laughs> and just crossed out bitches. <laughs> like no, that's no, no, no. No, we're not doing that one. <laughs> oh, so good. Oh, and my favorite, my new favorite meme, and I can't unsee it now is the one that Pat posted when they did the live show the other day and that Rob Zombie is the hot topic Randy Savage. Yeah, that one that <laughs> one's it was fucking brilliant. That one I that one I had actually seen before they put they put up there and I was like I was uh, I, I was like, "Oh, I just I just saw this like 5 like 5 seconds ago." It's so ridiculous it's though. It's so true. All right, continuing on with this particular festival on Saturday, September 28th, they got Guns N' Roses, Godsmack, Ice Cube, Hailstorm, Dropkick Murphys, Stone Temple Pilots, Suicidal Tendencies, The Melvins, Andrew W.K., Bad Flower, not to be confused with Bad Finger, um, Knocked Loose, Anti-Flag, Red Cross, Parlor Mob, Like a Storm, Jelly Roll, Dirty Honey, Dead, and Junk Bunny. Junk Bunny. <laughs> Another great name. <laughs> Another great name. Jesus. Um, you, know what, you know what I would I, I find interesting um, is... Ice Cube, been around for a long time. I figure like he would be one of those people that would collaborate with a metal band, right? Like like at some point, cause, because it seems like everyone has done it. Because like Ice T has Body Count, um, Exhibit was on uh, Within Temptation with, record. Within Temptation, um, you have the guy, you have Fragile Mortals, with um, with one of the guys from Run DMC. Right. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you have you have all these guys. Like collaborating, I feel like Ice Cube would would, would be one very would well that. suited. Yeah, very well suited because his 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 vocal styling is very aggressive. Like it would just very, would, it would come across very well. Yeah, and that's the kind of that's the thing. Like like with with rap personally, I like more aggressive style, and that would work. I think. Yes, I th- I I am one hundred percent in agreement with you there. Uh, the last day of the festival is Sunday, September 29th, and it features Disturbed, Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, Breaking Benjamin, Die Ant Ward. Die Ant Ward? Die Ant Ward. Die Ant Ward. I figured. Die Krups. Die Krups, yeah. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> the Bart. The. <laughs> the Bart. The. <laughs> All right. Anyone Three Days who, Grace. Anyone, anyone who's German can't be evil. <laughs> <laughs> Three Days Grace. Some 41, Deadland Ritual, White Reaper, Demon Hunter. I'm not sure what this one is. It's H-O-N... Uh, I think it's supposed to be horror. I think it's supposed to be horror, but it's it's spelled H-O-9-9-0-9. Yeah. So it, ha- it would seem that it would be horror. I think anyway. It's, I think it's horror. Angel Dust, Sick Puppies, Amigo the Devil, Fire from the Gods, Broken Hands, and Anemic, anemic uh, Royalty. Uh, Amigo the Devil and Anemic Royalty are great names, too. Yes. So, man, there's a lot of great names. Yes, yes. All right, so next up in festival news here is Psycho Las Vegas continues to make waves as it announces its full artist lineup for this year's festival at Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino August 16th through the 18th. From Opeth's only U- uh, U.S. performance in 2019 and Megadeth performing their only Vegas show of the year to the return of fan favorite Electric Wizard. The lineup is, is sure to create one for the record books. Uh, here is a very redacted uh, lineup because it was in alphabetic order and featured a lot of bands I wasn't familiar with. So I picked and chose, pick and chose the bands that we know. Yeah. So we got 1349. Andrew W.K., Bad Religion, Carcass, Clutch, Deaf Heaven, Fu Manchu, Full of Hell, Glass Jaw, 
Goat Whore, High on Fire, Megadeth, Opeth, Riding Christ, Royal Thunder, Violence, and of course we mentioned Electric Wizard. Yeah. Royal Thunder. Yes. Yes. I think Royal Thunder is coming around here, or they came around here, I, like a headlining show, and of course it was one of those days like, yeah, I gotta work. <laughs> Fuckers. Like, we'll talk about that and also in a minute. Yeah. About a night of work and a really amazing show. Anyway. Yeah. Here's a really interesting show. Dropkick Murphys will kick off fall 2019 with a coast-to-coast tour featuring Clutch. Launching September 20th at the Mass Mutual Center in Springfield, Massachusetts. Joined by Hatebreed on most dates, plus special guests Amigo the Devil and Russ Rankin Rankin of Good Riddance on select dates. The tour wraps October 15th at the WAMU WAMU? WAMU. WAMU Theater in Seattle, Washington. Tickets for most dates go on sale, or they went on sale Thursday, April 18th. Oh my god. It's the 22nd, isn't it? Yes. Where did this month go? I have no fucking clue. No clue. But here's that show. This amazing show. Oh, yeah. That's coming to San Antonio on October 20th to the Aztec. Oh, and and in case you haven't realized, we've gone on to touring news. Oh, Right on. Yeah, you, you didn't. My fault. You no, know, I'm just. You, you you went straight into the next thing. I think it's because I'm pissed. Yeah. But copy and paste. Amon Amarth will descend from the land of ice and snow to headline a history-making charge ah. across North America <laughs> with fellow Swedish warlords, arch enemy at the gates, and Grand Magus. The show is happening on a Sunday night, and we both work Sunday nights. Hammer of the gods. It's <laughs> fucking brutal. I, I would take off for that show. Like I'm thinking, like I'm gonna tell my boss, say, hey, listen, I'll work Saturday if I can get into this show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if I have my kids. My <laughs> my brother will watch the kids, so so I can go to this fucking show. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> when do you watch the kids? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I will I will call up and be like I uh, <laughs> I was in a plane crash and my whole family is a vegetable I'll see you uh, Wednesday my whole family is and I'm a vegetable <laughs> I'll, I'll see, see you, you Wednesday. tomorrow <laughs> fuckers like that is like the oh. show right there cause the last time I saw Modern Moth was at the Aztec and it sounded incredible Grand Magus Fucking at the gates and Arch Enemy. I haven't seen Arch Enemy in forever. I haven't seen them with Alyssa yet, so... I've already seen Arch Enemy, so I'm not worried about that. At the gates, I would like to see, just to say that I'd like to see them. Grand Magus doesn't come around that often, so that I would have to see. Yeah, and just to hear Triumph and Power live. If they play it live. Fuckers. Ugh. Ugh. Nah. That's upsetting. All That Remains has announced a spring 2019 headline tour with support from Unearth, Big Story, and The Ninth Planet Out. The trek will kick off on May 30th in Amityville, New York, and conclude on June 15th in Poughkeepsie, New York. I gotta bring up Pluto like that. Ninth Planet Out. Punk asses. You're out of here. You're not even a planet anymore. Demons and Wizards. The side project of Ice Earth main man John Schaefer and Blind Guardian singer Hansi. We'll embark on the A Magical Encounter with Demons and Wizards North American headline tour in the summer. The band will hit the road starting August 17th in Los Angeles and will wrap up the track with a sold-out show on September 7th in Atlanta. The band will be joined by special guests Lizzie Borden and Tear, and will be playing major markets like New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Atlanta, and not San Antonio. <sighs> I think they're going to Dallas. I think that's where it is. I'm not driving to fucking Dallas, so... No, that's a that's a long drive. If it was Austin, maybe, but Austin, maybe Houston is a stretch. Yeah. The new Ronnie James Dio hologram will embark on a month long U.S. tour at the end of May. <laughs> the retweaked. <laughs> now with more. Mm. <laughs> they made him just a little bit taller. Now with more, no. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it's it's funny because um, I was just, I was listening to the iPod and Shuffle, and there's a track that I was playing. Um, I think it was 
It wasn't Man of the Silver Mountain. I don't remember what it was. But he really does use no a, a lot. lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And like, not even just in his own lyrics. Like, he does that a lot. But, like, live. Like, when he's doing, like, the, you know, the, the, the what I would call the, the instrument wrap-up. The, 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 they're all making yeah. noise and everything. He says no a lot. <laughs> 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 like he's sitting there telling him, "Shut the fuck up." He's <laughs> like, "No, we're not done yet. No, no, no!" <laughs> keep, keep going. Next song. No. And that's why. That's why they have so many freaking uh, uh, medleys. <laughs> All right, ZZ Top are celebrating their 50th year with a massive North American tour this summer. Kicking off the 50th anniversary tour August 16th, the real Tres Hombres will play coast to coast and border to border. Cheap Trick and Leonard Skinner will also join the tour as it snakes through the country into late October. I would see that. Hell yeah. I would totally see that. I'm just waiting for their, their beards to turn gray. It's a die yeah, job. It's not happening. It's a die job. All right. Ginger has announced a fall headline tour of North America. Support on the trek will come from the Browning. The tour starts September 7th in St. Louis, Missouri, and runs through November 2nd in Portland, Oregon. Before they return stateside, Ginger will be hitting South Africa, Turkey, and all over Europe. And there is a San Antonio date, September 21st, at the River City Rock Fest. Oh, it's not. That's, that's what we were discussing. That's before. why we were discussing it, yes. And I looked it up. Uh, there's no full lineup yet for the River City Rock Fest, but this is the first year that has been expanded to two days. Two days of the River City Rock Fest. All right. And it's right at the beginning of my vacation in September. So this guy is considering making that week a very musical week. Making up for the... Uh, making up for the... Um Past couple years, yeah. <laughs> no, the amount of the amount of Marth show. Yeah, depends on the lineup. We'll see what the lineup is. Yeah. But from what I understand, they've been very, they've been inc- uh, becoming very good about diversifying and. Well, just... from, from from what I've heard from Alamo True Metal, which is uh, Jane Nanda's thing, yeah. like they like they're putting together something big, like some 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 real metal stuff. Well, like, the thing is, like the show has been getting bigger every year, so it makes sense. Yeah. And to have Ginger there as, is just a very good indication of the direction that they're heading in. That's, that's what I mean. Like, they're heading in that direction. Like, they're, they're metal. Yeah. yeah. All right. Here's some one-offs, or just one one-off here. Journey are taking over the Las Vegas Strip this fall with a limited engagement inside the Coliseum at Caesars Palace from October 9th through the 26th, 2019. These Las Vegas residencies seem to be a very popular thing amongst the older generation. Of bands, which is it makes a hell of a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you already have. I mean, it's it's in Vegas. You already have a set like potential audience. Yeah, I mean, I mean, people tend to go to Vegas not just for the gambling, but for the shows. Yeah, you know, and you know, if you can make it some kind of extravaganza like Aerosmith has apparently been doing, you know, it's it's worth it. Yeah, for them. Yeah. And plus, residencies are not exactly a new thing. I mean, every year in Alden March, Bro- Alden, Alden Brothers. Brothers takes over the uh, the Beacon Theater. The Beacon Theater. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go on to heavy metal in the charts, and you have a noteworthy point. I do have a noteworthy point here. According to Billboard, Three Days Grace has extended its record for the most number ones in the 38-year history of Billboard's mainstream rock songs airplay chart, with Right, Left, Wrong. It's 15th, 15th, number one single on the tally. With this latest achievement, the band pushes further ahead of runner-ups Shinedown and Van Halen, who each have 13. It's amazing. I think I've ever heard one song by Three Days Grace. Right? And it's like... And it was like 15 years ago. Yeah, and, and, it's like, and it's like, where where is this coming from? What stations are we listening to? Is this Spotify? Is this what? What am I missing? What where, where is this coming from? Because I I'm obviously missing it. Right. So I I I don't know. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, I mean, I remember when uh, 
what's it called? Um, Hardwired to Self Destruct came out, oh. and they played Hardwired on uh, on Kiss, and then that was it. Yeah. They played it once, and then that was it. <laughs> yeah. They were done, and they went back to their normal routine of playing whatever. Yep. Yeah. So I I don't know what's going on. I I'm 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 old. I'm confused. I'm, I'm tired. Say, tired. Tired of the day. day. Very out of touch with the uh, the, the world. I guess. <laughs> Speaking of out of touch with the world, let's go through the top five on the Billboard charts. <laughs> yes. Two hundred here. Oh great. Uh, <laughs> number one is a new record from Khalid. Okay, Not I, to be I, confused I, with DJ Khalid. Oh, okay. Then no, I haven't heard of it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. I thought I knew something. Yeah. This is a totally two different guys. I thought I knew things. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Number two is When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? By Billy Eilish. Eilish? Eilish? Eilish. Eilish. Yeah. I've heard the name, but I don't know anything about the music. No, neither do I. All right, number three is Victory Lap by somebody named Nipsey Hussle. That's actually a surprisingly good name. No, it's not like hustle, like like making a hustle. It's H-U-S-S-L-E, so it's like Russell, but hustle. Oh, then that's stupid. (laughs) You fucked it up. You fucked it up. You fucked it up. All right, number four is Thank You Next by Ariana Grande, which I've heard too much of. How? How? When I do, oh, when I drive radio, for driving. when I do drive for Uber and Lyft, I, I just put on pop radio. When you drive for Redacted, <laughs> no, you don't need to redact those. You don't need to redact those. All right, and number five is uh, "Death Race for Love" by Juice World. That's a great album title, right? "Death Race for Love." I like that one too. I like that one too. Here's a interesting one. We're just gonna start scrolling again here, but number eight is the new album. Called Reboot by Brooks and Dunn. Why you do this? <laughs> Why you ass- do this? Because I'm an asshole. Why you do this? Why are you like this? And I'd <laughs> rather get kicked in the dick a thousand more times. <laughs> Why you do this? <laughs> Number 14 is the Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack featuring some little band called Queen. Yeah, I never heard of them. Nah, never. Never heard of them. Apparently, Reba McIntyre has a new album out. That, that I that I I can believe. Uh, she's at number twenty-two. Yeah. Wow, there's a lot of same artists up in the top here. Like I've seen a couple of Juice Worlds already. I think Travis Scott's been up here a couple times. Like these are like people I don't have any clue. Post Malone. A Ain't couple giving times. a fuck. Ah, the Dirt soundtrack. Is that number 37? Featuring another little band called Motley Crue. Now with 90% more inaccuracies. 90% more. Hey, here's an interesting one. A re-entry coming back into the charts at number 43 is the greatest hits of Queen. Re-entry into the charts? Re-entry into the charts. Back at number 43. So a different greatest hits. So now there's like four greatest hits albums on... It's just the main greatest hits, I think. Oh. Not, it's not like the Platinum it's, Collection. It's, it's, it's the one I have. Probably. It's the one with the... Is that cover? Okay, no. It's not the... I don't have that one. Okay, well, it's not the Platinum Collection 1, 2, and 3. I think... Here is the best news of the day. Number 64 is the new album from Periphery. Hail Stan. 64. 64. Wow. New album. Wow. Pretty awesome. They probably will be very, very low next week. Uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. Lots of Nipsey Hustle all of a sudden. That was like third I've seen of theirs. Like, I don't know who this band Pup is, P U P. But they have a uh, an album called Morbid Stuff. It's a brand new album, <laughs> and it's it's debuting at number one hundred six. <laughs> I Prevail has an album out called Trauma. That's at number one hundred seven. I I, I want to be there for the thought process of that album. It's like we want to name the album Morbid Stuff. 
<laughs> this I Prevail album, by the way, is at 107. Uh-huh. And last week, I think it was his debut at number 14. Okay. Pretty impressive. Okay. Nirvana's Nevermind is at 110. Yeah. Greatest Hits by Guns N' Roses at 112. Rumors by Fleetwood Mac is at 118. I will always talk about that record. I think I have that on record. <laughs> That's the one album I like. Whenever I think about it, I think about the scene from High Fidelity where he's talking about how he organizes his yeah. albums autobiographically. Yeah. I'm totally watching that movie this weekend. I can't wait. Um, greatest Hits 1, 2, and 3. The Platinum Collection by Queen is at 137. 137 already? Yeah, we're that low already. Dancing Queen by Cher is a re-entry. Dude, 143. really? Yeah, oh, yeah. I told you? <laughs> you got one? I was saying Boolerns. <laughs> Metallica's Black Album is at 148. Back in Black is at 151. Abbey Road is at 155. Beatles 1 is at 156. And Hot Rocks by the Rolling Stones is at 157. That's, that's not a bad stretch. of. That's a nice little stretch of classic rock right there. Now there's a band, there's a there's an album here called, uh, it's Die Lit, but I I, I read it D Lit. <laughs> I'm just so confused now. Yeah, th- this one is definitely Die Lit. Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that, that one's that one's probably a, like a rap artist. Yes, it was. <sighs> Hate that phrase. Heavy sigh. Heavy sigh for the for the fact that the top two hundred tends to suck. Yep, that's it. We got on. Oh wow, yeah, wow! You that finished. Blue yeah, doll. Not even, not even like a saving grace at nope. one ninety eight. Nope. Wow. Blue dog. Uh huh. Yep. So here is the top twenty five hard rock albums. Let me guess: Three Days Grace and Nickelback and. And <laughs> Number 25 is a re-entry. Uh-huh. The self-titled record from Rage Against the Machine. What? Right. What? What happened there? <laughs> yeah, out of nowhere, Rage Against the Machine. There you go. But then number 24 is Three Days Grace. Uh, with X1, which is also a re-entry, so they must have been off the charts uh, for a little bit. Number 23 is Zeppelin 4. Number 22 is a re-entry of Experience Hendrix, the best of Jimi Hendrix, featuring Jimi Hendrix. 21 is Antennas to Hell from Slipknot. Number 20 is the All the Right Reasons Nickelback. Number 19 is Meteora, Linkin Park. 18, Greatest Hits, Motley Crue. 17, Greatest Hits, Three Doors Down. 16, Greatest Hits, Aerosmith. 15, Greatest Hits, Foo Fighters. 14, Greatest Hits, Led Zeppelin. The Mothership, that's a Greatest Hits record. But I didn't want to to break my Greatest Hits streak here. Number 13, Greatest Hits, Def Leppard. Which is actually the story so far, the best of Def Leppard. Yeah. Number 12 is Linkin Park, Hyper Theory. (laughs) 11 is Greatest Hits, Bon Jovi. Number 10 is A Decade of Destruction, Five Finger Death Punch. Number 9, Back in Black, ACDC. Number 8, Metallica Black Album. Number 7, Greatest Hits, 1, 2, 3, The Platinum Collection, Queen. Number 6, Greatest Hits, Guns N' Roses. Number 5, I Prevail, Trauma. Number 4 is a new album from Periphery, Hail Stan. 3, Greatest Hits, Queen. 2, The Dirt Soundtrack, Motley Crue. 1, Bohemian Rhapsody Soundtrack, Queen. Uh, to be expected. Yes. Yeah, that's all. Yes. If, if, if nothing, not, not much has changed except for that Rage Against the Machine thing. Out of nowhere. What is up with that? RKO out of nowhere. Shit. Can't well, complain, though. No, awesome. no, you can't, but like... But seriously, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Is it like celebrating an anniversary or something? No, I think it already did celebrate a major anniversary. Like well, ninety two, so seven. Well, this twenty seven years, so that's not really a rounded number. No, so their twenty fifth anniversary was two years ago. They've yeah. already been, 
they're up for nomination at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, they missed it this year, like the last two years, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Weird. It's either that or people are just really upset with the political climate and they're going old school. <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing. They, they, they want an excuse to yell out, "Fuck you! You won't do what you tell. I won't do what you tell me." Pretty much. Pretty much. Again, not gonna complain. Yeah. Do we have a discussion point for today, I brother? I do not have a discussion point for today. So. So let us discuss me getting this food. Okay. <laughs> so I think we'll call it there. Uh, on that note, we must make our curtain call because Warrior needs food badly. And a nap and a workout. Uh, I'm like a puppy. I have to walk the dogs. So. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So until next time, I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. And we are the Slime.